You're listening to the KSO Show, and our, our position previews for Kansas State football continue. I'm Derek Young, joined by Grant Flanders, and we're going to probably talk about what most would perceive as the most interesting position group on the football team this year, and that is the linebacker position, which, you know, there's some doubts about just the quality or the depth of this unit. They did add a transfer in the offseason, and Eric Munoz, some thought they would do more um, than just add Munoz. They haven't. And so we're, all we're left really is with what Chris Kleiman said in Arlington um, in terms of maybe a boost of confidence and that they do feel really good about Daniel Green and Cody Fletcher and that those two as ones will probably get more snaps than the ones did the last couple of years, meaning maybe less rotation at this group. What do you make of that? Kind of worries me because it makes me think that the guys behind Cody Fletcher and Daniel Green – may not be ready um, or as ready as they think they are because if you're going to say that you're going to rely on these guys more than the guys behind him that's that's basically what it speaks to me and and i'm not surprised by that either i mean we've heard about nick allen and austin ward doing nice things in practice you know uh, nick allen former walk-on now has now on scholarship austin moore still a a walk-on but um, two guys that I mean have been talked up for years, and now this year I think they will make an impact um, more than they have any other season. But that still does give me some reservation until I really see what they can do on the football field. Yeah, I would imagine that that second group, at least at this point, you know, we're getting into the second week of fall camp. It sounds like it really is Nick Allen and uh, Austin Moore, but they probably do have Wayne Jones and Eric Munoz nipping at their heels. It does call into question a little bit the, the addition of Eric Munoz if he's not maybe in the first group or two at linebacker. It'll also be interesting if there's any wrinkles on the defense that could maybe alleviate the stress at this, uh, at this particular position. Uh, I, I, we kind of know what's there already. We've discussed it. And we, there is obvious reasons to maybe be a little concerned about this unit. Probably the most questionable one on the defense, which is probably the questionable component on this 2021 Kansas State football team. I guess the next question is what, what player can maybe impact this group the most positive from a positive standpoint to maybe perhaps not make it the concern that we believe it to be? I think it'd be Daniel Green. I think it's he's got to be – the guy everyone thinks he can be, um, a, you know, a four-star out coming out of high school. He's got to turn into that dynamic player. Um, he's got the length and the size to be, a, you know, a solid, I think, line, inside linebacker. Um, and he's shown, you know, flashes here and there. But we have never seen a consistent Daniel Green from game in, game out yet. But he's also never been in a position where he's had to start every game. So this will be a year where he is tested and he will be the most important guy that needs to make the most important plays like an Eli- like Elijah Sullivan was last year um, to be su- a successful team. Of course, last year had all sorts of injuries and whatnot. Justin Hughes um, started but struggled throughout with his injury issues. This year, Cody Fletcher and Daniel Green are going to really try to have to stay healthy all season long. Yeah, I think Daniel Green is probably the best answer for that question just because he's the one with the highest ceiling and potential. It can probably be a standout on this unit that we're not sure that they have, but if it's going to be anyone, obviously green is probably the more likely uh, of anyone on that unit to, to really rise to the occasion and and be what they need. Uh, Probably a little bit of an argument for Nick Allen, just because if that when they do creep into the next wave after green and Fletcher, they are going to need someone that they can rely on a little bit more. And if he really is, that top reserve, like Chris Kleiman has alluded to, then they're going to need you know some big minutes from him at some point in the season, probably at multiple points in yep. the season. So Daniel Green's probably 1A there as, as the most important player, but maybe number two, I don't know if I would say 1B, but maybe number two is Nick Allen. Um, is, is, I guess at, at what point do you think we'll have our answers about the linebacker position, if it is a good enough to compete in the Big 12 or if yeah. it is a huge liability? I think we should be able to find out in the first three games of non-conference play. I mean, Stanford right away will be a test. And, um, you know, I guess Fletcher and Green should be able to stay healthy most of that game, obviously. But if they don't and get dinged, we'll be able to see Nick Allen and see how he performs right away or whoever else might emerge during fall camp. But um, – it's it's in those first three games where we will have a good idea 
um, because even Nevada will be a good opponent, you know, three games into the season. And at that point, um, that's when you can start seeing either injuries arise or maybe a guy behind Daniel Green and Cody Fletcher can arise and, you know, eat up some more minutes and give those guys a rest when they need it. Because that is something that will be necessary at that position. It's not easy to be on the, the field, you know, all game long, especially on defense. So that's something that's going to be, you know, something to monitor. But I think within those first three games, the very latest, I think, by Oklahoma State, uh, first Big 12 game of the season, we'll have a good idea of whether this is a big liability. And, you know, it's really could show up in game one, depending on how Cody Fletcher and Daniel Green do right out the gate. Yeah, I think the solid answer is we'll know after the non-conference. It is a tricky non-conference. Yeah. You play Stanford out of the gate, a Power 5 opponent um, on a neutral neutral venue. And then you play Southern Illinois, a pretty decent FCS program that beat North Dakota State last season, which was in the spring. So it'll be interesting just from that standpoint. They uh, they just completed a, se- a season not long, long, not long ago. Nevada, who has – who perhaps could be a top 25 team when they walk into Bill Snyder Family Stadium week three. You probably have a pretty good idea at that point. I might creep into the fourth game a little bit just Mm -hmm. because you are playing a pretty decent Big 12 team, maybe a very good Big 12 team um, in Oklahoma State um, that typically has some explosive playmakers on the offensive end. So I might want to take a peek at a Big 12 contest, certainly one against the caliber of Oklahoma State before I make any huge conclusions but we'll probably have a pretty good idea after three games it'll be interesting the the linebackers were pretty i guess they were kind of poor last year too but so was the entire defense especially when they ran out of players and and really fall apart in the final two games where they give up 45 points to iowa state and 69 points to texas um definitely two games to forget if you're a member of that defense so they'll probably also have quite the motivation to respond and redeem themselves for the way they finished last year performance wise uh up next we'll probably dig into the running back position and and that that's kind of probably the opposite of the linebacker that's a position that's probably going to invite a little bit more excitement got some juice got some playmakers there so stay tuned to kso show for that for grant flanders i'm Derek young thanks for listening and tell your friends